Hello, good afternoon. It's Julius. Aš gimiau ir užaugau Kauno. Julius, I was born uh, and I was raised in China. Oh, in Kauno, I'm sorry, but I got stuck in uh, China. I didn't manage to come to Lithuania, therefore I participated uh, through distance. And thanks to my colleagues, uh, Sumin and Jan you know, uh, quite uh, mysteriously and newly, I detected, I found Chirlonis. I started him researching, investigating, and since the conference international, I will continue my presentation in uh, uh, English. Ka Chirlonis nori mums pasakyti, kokia yra Chirlonio paraikslo žinia. Tai buvo nemažai tirinėtojų, kurie teigia, kad tikriausiai niekada negalime tikslai tai atsakyti. Niekada negalime, ar negalėsime iškuduoti žinutės ir nuspręsti, kad štai gerai, šie paveikslai mums norėjo pasakyti štai tą ar na. Ir tikriausiai gautinis atsakymas ir nėra nano tikslas, menas to nesiekia. Nano siekis yra pateikti daugiau negu vienoje žinio. Nano žinias lipi ne žodžiuose, nanas tai vaizdas. Ir tai yra langas į begalybę. Tačiau netgi tai... Much as possible to the message to the actual meaning of the event, of the story, of the philosophy, and even of the painting. For a long time, I didn't look at Chilonis' paintings, and one of the reasons was that I felt that his paintings are undecipherable. There is no way to find out what he wants to say. In my childhood, Chilonis' paintings often would give me a sense of deep sadness and even tragedy. So I wanted to move away from this deep sadness and tragedy. But eventually, when I started, started to study the Chinese concept of qi, unexpectedly to me, a lot of things have changed. I could say that the research of idea of qi eventually made me turn back, start looking at Shirlone's paintings. But this time, with the new eyes and with the new ideas, and I started to sense, understand, and appreciate Trilonis paintings in a different light. So how can Chinese idea of qi, which could be understood as energy, matter, the essence of life, the primordial energy, how this idea can interact with the Lithuanian artist Trilonis, with his paintings, how this idea can change someone's attitude and help to understand paintings? In the leaves of Moria Garden, written in 1924, originally in Russian, there is a saying that could be compared to the very general meaning of Chinese qi. The spirit of Christ breathes across the desert of life. Like a spring, it wears its way through the solid rocks. In the milky firmament, it radiates in lines beyond counting and rises upward in the stem of every flower. Qi is the essence of life is the essence of the universe. It is what makes us who we are. It's at the core of our soul, at the core of our vitality. It's also the driving force behind everything in the universe. The smallest flower, grass, plant. The concept of sea may feel alien to some of us. That's not the word we use in Lithuanian, Russian or even English, but the idea behind this in many cultures, in many nations, we just may understand it differently and call it in different names. For Chinese, Qi is the highest concept, the most abstract one, but at the same time it's also something that is very close to us, that is very down to earth, something we deal with every day. The concept of Qi has many meanings and many aspects, but in the art, I would like to focus on three aspects. These three aspects is, first of all, its movement, force, or life force. Finally, it's something majestic, something that uplifts us, something that makes our bodies tremble. To make these three aspects more specific and related to Chulonis, I would like us all to focus just on one mature Chilonis painting. If there was no idea of Tsi, in my case, and in a lot of cases of other people, most of the drawings are static drawings. 
It's something that is finished. It's the final product. It's just the static, not moving objects that can be digitized, can be copied, pixelized, but that's it. Objectively, it's a finished product. However, when you start having an idea of C, C has the power to make things alive because it is alive. This C power, first of all, manifests itself as a movement. Because of C, we start to see movement in the things that first appear static. So first look at the most important elements in this painting. I would start with the bird, and in the whole painting, the bird here actually could be a messenger who carries this vision. Then the next object are the mountains or the hills. There are two of them. One is on the left and the other on the right. The third element are the stars. We have a star on the lower left, high in the middle, and high on the right. Then a very important part of this image is a very small picture of a man. Looks like an ancient man with a crown, a very special one. Then in the center of the painting we have a castle which looks like a great vision, like a mirage. It could be a castle of dreams or a castle as an achievement in real life. A very important place in this picture takes the figure of the serpent, even the name of the image is serpent. Besides these, there are other objects in the painting that I'm not going to discuss in detail because of time constraints. Talking about the stars and other elements, uh, we may also observe that painting has uh, certain shapes that uh, may not be immediately visible, but stars form shapes of triangle. Every star covers different objects. So, for so example, this star mainly beams on the left hill. The middle star is focusing on this vision castle. Uh, as well as on a human being figure and on the hills. Higher right star, which has quite different color, texture and light, beams on the serpent, on the head of the serpent. And then after observing this beautiful painting for longer, you may realize that there are more shapes. For example, this one is especially interesting because the serpent forms a downward-looking triangle that uh, kind of touches the man and which is focusing on the bird, which could also be seen as a some kind of a fret, depending on what these symbols mean to you. There is also the upward-going triangle made of hills, the man, and this triangle is focusing at the center of the image, at the castle. So there are like two distant polarities or energies, which by the way also would fit well the idea of C, which is always dynamic and always this interplay of two origins, in and yang. Now next, uh, when I talked about C, I mentioned that the first thing we become aware when we talk of C is some kind of a movement, and this movement could be also very subtle, very refined, not immediately visible, and sometimes the movement that is not visible, that is very difficult to catch, carries more power than the visible, obvious movement. So obviously all the stars bring this energy C movement from the top left to the bottom right. Then if we analyze separately, the left hill has up for right movement, there is a movement of the right hill that is also uh, a part of this human being. It looks like he just came here or came for a while and been standing here. Then uh, there is a movement, a bit of a spiral movement uh, from the serpent and the movement of the castle. You could talk about the movement without knowing C, but for some reason 
This idea of qi enables us to be easily aware of the movement. And plus, this movement is not just straightforward. This is just a simplified scheme. If you look at every object, uh, the movement is uh, not one-dimensional, not in one direction. It's quite subtle and complicated. For example, if we talk about the movement from the stars, if we talk about the qi, it seems that this movement is like a spiral fluid flow that is gradually growing. Because of this movement, every object that I mention could be seen as a separate world of its own. Besides the movement, the, um, and especially if we talk about the C, C is interesting that it is something that can connect and unite different types of reality, and actually it is a connector between realities. It can also create individuality, and it can also join individual things into unity. Uh, talking uh, about the qi and movement, uh, there, are, there is a lot of interaction in this uh, image. For example, there is subtle interaction between the snake or the serpent and the human being and the bird. The snake would be actually, it seems like it's looking either at the human being figure or the bird or both. Uh, there is a certain interaction between the human being and the castle. It seems like this castle is a vision of a human being. And these high hills or mountains, they all point, they all lead to this castle. And uh, another interesting interaction is between the left hill and the snake, because you may aware that this left hill is a separate world with little houses and forests and life. There is a wind blowing over the, the trees, and this wind could be seen as serpent's breath. When we talk about seas movement, this movement is usually something much more than the words can describe. And this movement creates a feeling of beauty, a gracious movement an intelligent movement. Uh, this movement also has at least three aspects, the external, the internal, and then interdependent movement. So externally, when we think of C, it seems that this C is the essence of the painting. The painting is just a symbol, just the tip of the iceberg that represents that C. And that's the external aspect of the Tsi. As a, for internal, uh, the Tsi, it includes me. It's not just something external, but the Tsi is something that moves my imagination, that is the substance of my thoughts and my feelings. And when I say my, I mean that it could be anyone, not just me, a presenter. And then we talk about interdependency, there is uh, the interaction between the painting and the observer. So it's not just objective painting outside. It's not just me observing it, but there is the interplay, the dialogue on the subtle level between my thoughts, my imagination, and the painting. And this good painting, uh, like for Chinese only, really good paintings have this strong presence of qi. This good painting activates the C that is an observer, the C in terms of imaginations, sensations, the aesthetic, aesthetic feeling. And the observer, on the other hand, the, activates the C that is in the painting. So there is a very interesting external, internal, inter, between external, internal dynamics. I mentioned that the second aspect of C is some kind of a life force, because C essentially is a life force, the essence of our soul, it's the essence of every living being, it's the dynamic force that is behind everything. When I talk about the movement, this movement is always carrying this driving force. It seems like Trilonis is, by drawing all these things, is almost catching or expressing this life force that moves everything, that 
creates this world. And finally, after talking about movement and force, the further very important aspect when we talk about C and art, this C is not just something mechanical, it's not just something technical, not just uh, something that we can easily manipulate, but it's uh, the vast, infinite energy that gives us a very majestic, very uplifting feeling. If we look at all these elements that I showed in the painting, even separately, all of these elements, the serpent, the bird, the castle, the human being, stars, all of them, besides this intricate movement, driving force, they give the observer a feeling of something great. And then all these elements together, they create this one uplifting, beautiful symphony. Now, all that said, we are going to our initial question. Okay, but so what's the meaning? What Chulonis wants to tell here? What is the painting telling us? We probably never will have a final answer. and Everyone will have to choose the answer that fits them best. In the art, often, it's not only about what objectively the painting says, but it's also what this painting tells to us. We are creators of the meaning of the painting. We have to answer, first of all. We may never know what Chulonis meant, and maybe even Chulonis himself didn't know fully what he wanted to say, but it's us who strive for this answer. After talking about movement, force, majestic feeling, the fact that this particular painting creates strong feeling of very interesting sublime movement that carries the driving life force of Tsi. This fact of the movement already gives me a sense of meaning. And then we go a step further, it seems like the painting is calling us, calling to keep thinking, keep thinking, calling to go higher, calling to look for the beauty and uh, as a final note, and as the answer to this question, I wanted to say that the most puzzling thing for me in this painting was the serpent. We didn't have time, but I could have different kinds of interpretation of stars. I could talk about this human being, about what he thinks and feels, about the birds, about different parts. But what is the meaning of the serpent? Why is the serpent in the sky? Is this some kind of Chinese dragon? Is this evil or good? What does it mean? And interestingly, if you look at this painting, the painting that has Qi, it never gets boring and you grow together with the painting and you find new and new meanings of layers. You start seeing things. Eventually, I got this concluding insight. The serpent, which in Lithuanian is Givate, has something to do with Givastis, which means uh, a root element of vitality, of life force. So the serpent is one of these animals that symbolize the very essence of vitality. In this sense, it is very similar to the Chinese idea of qi, because the most concentrated form of qi is in the seed. It can be a very little seed, but it has extreme power, because the power is concentrated in one little point. In this sense, serpent for me, is another representation of Tsi as a life force. Serpent here could be both the good and the bad. So it could be a challenge, a temptation for human being. It's something that he has to overcome, but it's also the power that could be turned into something good. It's the uh, human's ability to transform different forces of life, to to change into something better, to create. And which eventually means that if there is a lot of dangers, this human being, he could fall in a beast and uh, start everything again, or he could gradually grow wings and reach his achievement, the castle. And the castle, as a dream in the air, could become something real, a real achievement in life. So the serpent, in this case, starts making sense, and it's a part of the 
message that this painting is bringing. Thank you, Ulysses, and uh, we are waiting. The for him to see. We thank you for a, a beautiful, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, many ideas, new ideas uh, in which we would like to live. Uh, it would be great. And to find Chirlonis newly, differently. I think, uh, yes, uh, others who listened to you were similarly impressed uh, as I was. And so now questions are allowed. One question mm, came from Facebook. A question for uh, Julius. A motif of poles, of columns, uh, a very frequent uh, motif. What is your opinion? What do you think about that? In uh, the motif of columns, of poles is quite frequent in Chirloni's pictures. Could you comment on them? What is your opinion about them? Now you said Lietuviškai suprantat. Stulpu. 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 In this picture? No, in general. In general, in Chirloni's uh, uh, art. So my, my honest answer is that I would need to look at these paintings. I would need to see this painting and uh, uh, kind of meditate, uh, observe the flow of Tsi. Uh, because otherwise, I will just give a very abstract, very dry answer, or it will be a guess. So honestly, I would need to think about this more and look at these mm -hmm. poles to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Maybe in a minute I will have the answer, but not now. Uh -huh. uh, so then I have a question, a brief question. I was greatly interested by your other works about Qi, uh, and uh, uh, particularly one description of Qi energy, a subtle Qi on the lower level. Lietuviškai <laughs> Mes jau diskutavome Čirlionio kaip mąstytojo tą veiklą, kad jeigu pažvelgti tai kaip į mąstymą ir išraiška to, kas sumąstoma, ir žiūrovo žiūrėdamas į paveikslą suvokė tuos apmastytus profilius ar, ar išvalgas. Um, bet kaip jūs labai teisingai pastebėjot, čia energija yra tai, kas perneša. Ir kad paveikslas gali būti suprantamas kaip nešėjęs čia energijos. Tai, ką mastytojai sukupė krūtiniai ir įdeda į paveikslą ir um, žiūrovos paveikslo gali tą um, per ar rezonans, ar meditaciją, kai, kaip minėjote, pajausti. Ar um, galima būtų taip interpretuoti į energijos um, tą paveiką, kad um, 
paveikslas tarsi nešėjęs į energijos ir meditacijos metu, jinai būtent į energiją, kinų tradicijų suvokiama kaip tas, kas tas nešėjęs, pavadinkime, tos ar išminties, ar išvalgų, ar suvokimų, ar kažkokių tai patėrimų. Man atrodo, kad jeigu pabaigė klausim, aš šiai būtų įdomu išversti džampinį ir sumin, kad tai įgais, aš čia matyti, kad jau įsit. Aš aš agančio čičių šiu taidžio, čia aš šiandien dašau tą įgalėmingę, tą pinčiančią hualimę, nu, šiu tai šiandien šiu negasim šiandien šiu tai įsilimę, kur šiu tai hualimę, kur esi anmenė šiandien. Tai man atrodo, kad jūs labai gražiai įvardinot šitą ir labai ten įdomint It seems to me that you said all that very beautiful, and this quote is of 2,000 years, you know, it is really old, you know, and was written yes, 2,000 years ago, and it has a connection with a quote in the beginning when I talked about the leaves of the Morian Garden, and it seems to me that you kind of provided an answer. You formulated very beautifully that uh, she is as a carrier of the message. And as Solomia talked about uh, physics, uh, about black holes, so if you remember, recall physics, uh, everything is uh, vibration and energy is, uh, you know, everywhere around and behind us. And if we talk, uh, you know, in modern terms, uh, so that is not art, although some type of art. So we all see an image. I see an image. I see Zilvenas. I see people, the audience. But uh, in fact, you know, this is uh, just a, a signal of energy. And that uh, energy signal is rebroadcasted uh, through technologies then in our brains, in our conscience. And indeed, it seems to me that you uh, very sharply, in a very interesting way, expressed, uh, you know, that meaning that the picture carries thinkers, uh, wisdom, chi that he had accumulated in the course of his uh, artistic uh, life. And it goes that uh, there is much more in the picture than can be obvious uh, and seen with naked eyes. So I try to answer or rather I provided a comment. Thank you very much. Uh, more questions? Uh, Laura has a question. Domus pranešimas. Aš dėl pačios energijos kūrybinės tiesiog bandžiau įsimastyti. Ir man toks kyla klausimas. Gal jūs tyrinėjot, nes man regis pažadinti kiekviename žmoguje, kuris stebi tą paveikslą, tą kūrybinę energiją, gali tik pakilėti jų kūrėjai. Na, jų nedaug istorijo buvo, turbūt kaip Mikelandželas ar kažkas kitas, kas mus sukrečia, kai mes žiūrim. Bent jau man dabar kyla klausimas, ar jūs dar turite tos, nu, vat, tokios kūrinčios ar cei energijos pavyzdžių kitų, kurie jau ar galite sulyginti su čiulioniu. Tai ačiū labai. Aš mūsų pavyzdžiu, kad aš jūsų 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 Uh, several images arose in me in this connection. I like myself and some Russian painters like uh, Nikolai Rerich uh, traveled a lot uh, in the East and his works are closely connected uh, with this energy. Frankly speaking, the first time I felt such a strong feeling, I didn't call it that time chi, but I felt this uh, when I visited uh, in Nikolai Rerich's museum in New York, because uh, before that I saw just reproductions, and over there I saw them 
in real life first, and they kind of didn't expect that pictures may be alive. You uh, may do uh, nothing. It's just a conversation is initiated, and you have a conversation with the picture when you watch it uh, live. But then later on, I watched, uh, you know, and I noticed that uh, it is characteristic of other uh, works of art. But uh, I was uh, in another field uh, for a long time, not in the field of art. And uh, once I was very surprised uh, in one place uh, uh, at a conference in America, in Washington, it seems to me, we visited one gallery uh, where there were many pictures from the Middle Ages, from the Renaissance, uh, and uh, other periods, and I was also, I, I thought we will quickly review, we'll walk through along, etc. But uh, uh, there uh, I was visited by a very live feeling. Everything seemed to me very well known and close, uh, akin to me. And I didn't pay too much attention to the chi, but if we talk about it, so that creative energy, you know, visited me, and I wouldn't uh, say that this is uh, the same energy as in uh, Cirlone's pictures. Uh, it's not identical, but uh, there is uh, something in common um, between those uh, two types of energies, uh, some uh, unusual, you know, and uh, exceptional artists and their creation. Thank you very much, Julius, for your excellent presentation for your very interesting uh, replies to our questions. Let's applaud.